Hey everybody, this is Derek McCaw from Fanboy Planet and welcome. Uh, very happy to have special guests today. We've got Robert Rittberger and Boo Boo Stewart, the writer or co-writer, director, and uh, star of a new horror film called Those Who Walk Away. And so welcome guys, so happy to have you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. So I want to open up by, I know that it's an it's inspired by uh, the ones who walk away from Omelis or Omelis. I don't know. I've never heard it out loud until this movie. Uh, so by Ursula K. Discussion on set too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know. We're Californians, so you might hear someone say Omelas. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it's uh, for those not in the know, it's Salem, Oregon backwards. Um, so uh, when either one of you or both, when did you first encounter that short story and how did it influence you in the making of this film? Um, yeah, it's a great question. Um, I heard about it first from a friend. And uh, for those that aren't familiar, it's essentially meant to be a sort of moral paradox of, can we be sort of happy while others are uh, kind of living in squalor? And, um, and so, you know, just like a kernel of an idea, it was more to sort of like speak to the motivations of a particular character. I, I definitely wouldn't say it was, it was kind of, you know, loosely inspired by it, but um, um, that was kind of it. But essentially for this film, um, you know, we take on a very kind of intense subject matter, um, which is in the film represented as kind of rot creep, you know, touches these people and it sort of rots them from, from the, um, the outside in. And so we saw like if rot creep continues, what's the obligation of those people to you know, kind of come forward and talk about it and sort of destroy that uh, versus just kind of perpetuating this cycle. Yeah, this is one of those uh, stories and one of, that it, it just never gets less relevant, unfortunately. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's the most, um, it, it's funny because it always has struck, struck me as a very um, interesting Christian question. You know, how mm -hmm. can you stand with this suffering? So before we get deep into the more fun portions of hopefully this interview uh i do want to ask um since it does sometimes feel like we are a, a bit in omelis or omelis um i know both of you do a lot of uh I, I think social justice work if i can characterize it that way so can you talk briefly about uh, both of you nonprofits that you work with that uh, maybe someone watching this can say oh i'd like to help them that are trying to make the world a little bit better hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, I <clears throat> I have one, uh, the Cameron Boys Foundation, uh, started by his uh, family. And Cameron, when he was with us, he passed away. But when he was with us, he was very much for um, uh, ending, gun, ending gun violence, very much for um, water crisis throughout the world and uh, ending that. And uh, epilepsy, also finding a cure for epilepsy. That's how he passed away. So... Um, they are continuing his path on just all the social justice work he was doing, um, working with the Thirst Project, building wells in countries and places that don't have clean water, um, doing a lot of that. And so the Cameron Boys Foundation is a great, great, great place to start. I think it's um, run by a great group of people. It's run by his family. And so if you haven't already, the Cameron Boys Foundation would definitely look it up. Robert, how about you? Yeah, I mean, thanks for that question. Um, I don't think I've gotten that question before, but <laughs> it's uh, so I, I run a group called um, the SIE Society, which stands for Social Impact Entertainment Society. And I'm also on the Producers Guild's uh, Social Impact Entertainment Task Force. And a lot of the work that we do is to really show the power of filmmaking, um, you know, whether it's Avatar and, and, and environmentalism or you know, horror films that um, that it can be, you know, entertaining and also speak to something more and that um, storytellers themselves should just better understand, uh, you know, whether it's through, you, you know, wh whom is represented on screen and, and behavior or depictions of violence, um, that storytellers should just better understand uh, the effects that, um, that that their stories, you know, have on, on um, yeah, on the world, really. Great, cool. Yes. So, and this is, this is a horror film that definitely you, you feel that. And I, and I agree with this, the ones that resonate are the ones that have some kind of meaning to this. You look to the stories we tell, and that is what our culture is, is grappling with. So, um, 
you may have touched on this before is, you know, taking this inspiration of uh, Le Guin's work, what sparked you to take it in directly into a horror film? I mean, it's a very interesting idea. And then the film itself kind of deals with this topic of sexual assault. And, um, you, you know, we don't, it's very important for me to never say that word in the film, to never, you know, have it directly. Um, but that's really the underlying theme, which is why I also say it's very different than than um, those who walk away from Omelas. Uh, but essentially, you know, with a lot of what was happening in, in yeah, around the Me, Me Too movement, um, I just kind of wanted to explore that theme on what is the sort of uh, responsibility of those who know um, to, you know, to come forward, to, to, to uh, yeah, to, to, to speak out. And, um, and so that's largely, you know, what was, what was interesting to me and, and, um, and that we explored in the film itself. I mean, largely uh, with, um, with Harvey Weinstein, right, of all of these people coming, coming forward and all those in the industry that, you know, heard rumors or kind of knew, you know, but didn't say anything, I thought, yeah, let's, let's, let's maybe explore this theme here. Okay. It, it is interesting. And with so much focus on Boo Boo's character, um, what was your collaboration like? I mean, when you were developing this script, did you know this was really going to essentially be, uh, it's a pretty good showcase for one actor. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think I ever thought about it like that. I, I think that made me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Th I was like, "Ooh, here we go!" And I was like, "Oh no, here we go!" <laughs> it was more like, "I have no idea what I'm gonna do. <laughs> like, how in the world are we gonna do this?" Um, yeah, it was uh, the collaboration process was the most I've ever had ever working on. I think anything I've ever done, like in any creative mean any creative experience. Um, Rob and I, we once I had gotten the script we both we were zooming back and forth back and forth back and forth calling 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 um just adding ideas and um i the script that i initially got was beautiful and intense and crazy and filled with so much like foundation and i just kind of wanted to like push it and take it further and um we were just as soon as we started and as soon as i remember explain to our like oh, i would i love it but i would think we can like push it even further he came back like instantly with a whole list of ideas and i was like whoa <laughs> just like floored and that he was i was just surprised that he was uh he listened you know because a lot of people like you know it's their baby and it's like no this is how it is but rob is such a collaborator and he um he like sets the foundation but then allows you to come and make it your own and add to it but and what i really love too is if it's an idea that is like he is not with he would like no you know which is, makes me feel good as an actor because i know that he's like it, he knows where it needs to go and he knows the lines that we can't cross and things like that and uh which in this movie there weren't many but, <laughs> but it was yeah it was amazing it was the best uh experience i've had working with a director and um yeah it's so collaborative every step of the way and and for me, you know, it was really. I think I was looking for permission to like to go further, right? Because we already had, you know, kids and animals and lots of things. And so when Boo Boo was like, "Let's let's take it farther." I mean, one had fen phenomenal ideas, you know, of how to do that. Um, but also, it like really like we played played off of each other so well, um, you know, to, to the to the end that we're actually writing a a, a new script together. Um, but but yeah, I still remember you know, us, you know, having these meetings and, and sending, uh, you know, sending a draft back and, you know, we still kind of joke about it, but, you know, Boo Boo was reading through, it's like, am I reading this right? The, 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 uh, the furniture is on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not dancing. It's not, you know, it's not a Fred Astaire moment. Yeah. Uh, it, literally <laughs> se several times I'd have to like go back and be like, Okay, I did read that right. Okay, okay, good. good, good. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I felt a very strong uh, in, in a lot of shots. I mean, it's very dreamlike, nightmarish, obviously, but very. Um, I felt a lot of homage to uh, David Lynch and Twin Peaks as well. Is that just me being the the reviewer going? 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, of course it is. You know, or or, or how much do you owe a debt to that? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, the um, you know the room itself, uh, you, you know, some of the production design was, you know, we definitely considered um, uh, Twin Peaks, but we also tried to go much more, you know, to um, uh, you know German expressionism. Um, you know, a lot of the lines in the basement um, were really ac akin to Metropolis, and um, and we really wanted. By the way, that's one of my favorite favorite films. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we really wanted to explore that sense of, uh, yeah, that sense of pushing reality and and not just you know with the action, but everywhere. And that was a huge you know testament to our production designer. Um, uh, and it, it just, yeah, I mean, everything she was able to turn around in that house, her name's Sonia Foltars, um, was just phenomenal. And, and also turn around quickly because we'd be in one room and then the next day we'd have to, you know, completely reset it and do it a different way. I mean, the kitchen, for example, I think you have four different looks just of the kitchen itself, <laughs> including the, including the, you know, the 1950s TV show that we shot. Yeah. Okay, I was going to ask about that. I mean, cause that, that was a nice nice turn and then you you see a completely different side of every actor mm. also the shortest the shortest take we had in the, <laughs> the shortest scene in the movie <laughs> yeah it was weird to say okay cut next yeah. set up <laughs> yeah. yeah and you have a um i'm assuming i that this was a pandemic shoot right and so you know, how did that affect your plans and adjust your your intentions for the film it was, you know, a very high anxiety uh, undertaking in the first place. And then you added on the pandemic uh, that it really had a lot of us realizing like at any moment things can fall apart, which is also, you know, a lot of the nature of how we, we shot the film. And, you know, again, just a testament to everybody who, you know, trusted one another and you know the professionalism and the precautions that were taken. I also noticed at the end there's heavy uh, thank yous to a specific theater, and I didn't know if that was a full theater company. And I'm sorry that I didn't write down the name of it, so you can also talk about that. So it seemed like it was uh, you got a lot of community support. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, we use the town theater, um, which appears in the film, <clears throat> but also the town of of Chillicothe. Uh, the, some of the community of, of, um, of Peoria and also uh, Dunlap. Um, we shot this in Illinois and everybody was just so gracious. Um, you know, we're so thankful to everything they, they helped with. And, um, and, and that was also, you know, why we set it in that location is we knew we really kind of needed to get outside of LA, um, that we needed something remote. <clears throat> Finding the house itself, you know, was a challenge. And, you know, maybe Boo Boo can speak to you know, there was something very tranquil about <clears throat> about being out in this kind of small town that really almost even felt like we were on a on a back lot. But yeah, I, I find that when you <clears throat> when you're when you leave like where you're comfortable to make a project, and you leave with, with like a small group, it really just brings everyone together. Uh, it kind of makes it definitely on set. I feel like it's a family community already, but when you take those people and put them in a location that is very foreign to all of us and, uh, we're all, we literally all stayed in the same hotel. Uh, and, uh, it really just bonded everybody together. And I, I really, really think that that was a big testament to how we all like work together, just being on set. I mean, we'd have these day, these ex extremely long takes and Diego, the, operator and I were always very close together. I feel like we just, because we spent so much time together on and off set, we, you build a rapport with these people and it just, it made this movie work. I think if we all had like separate living places and uh, everyone was doing the regular life while also trying to do the movie and yada, yada, it just, uh, I don't think it would have been as smooth. You talk about, about family um, <laughs> and you got to work with your father. Yeah. And I assume you have before. So what was that? Uh, he is the ghost slash monster, whatever you want to characterize that character as rot creep. What was that experience like working with your father as he's trying to terrorize you in a couple of seconds? <laughs> it, it was great. I, I didn't really even think. I, yeah. Part of me didn't even think about it because once you're kind of, I don't know, once you put the mask on and once I kind of like 
get into the mode of the scene, I honestly didn't even think about it. Um, but looking back on it, it was so smooth. And what he did, the subtleties he added to the character, I mean, acting behind a, like a, a mask and it, that's, you can't see what's happening here and it has to be like physical. And uh, I just thought that the subtleties that he did with like tilting the head and the little bits here and there were just perfect, really. I remember the first the first time Rob came over to our 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 ranch, he brought all these different options of masks, and uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. I actually have one of the <laughs> one of the options. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> and, and and do that. Uh, you know, how do you make the mental transition from? You know, a lot of people know you obviously from Disney. And this is a far, far cry from Disney. So, you know, as an actor, you make a, you know, a, a, a mental transition from being the Disney star to the uh, horror star. Um, I, I don't, I don't think of it as like transitioning. I just, it's just taking each part's different. You know, I do each film for a different reason. Um, and yeah, I, so I don't think of it as like, okay, now I can't act like this. I'm going to act like this. Um, you know, even day to day, like when you look at a scene, I don't think there's a certain way you should go about doing every scene because um, you might be feeling different that day or, um, yeah, I, I don't know. So for me, it's just, I just take it as it is and I just build it out from there. I, I really like, honestly, when I start a movie, I always think, gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I always get so nervous. And for this one, I was that feeling that skyrocketed tenfold. <laughs> I remember the first time the the reality of the weight of what we we're doing had sunk in was I was I was on Zoom and I had been with the script a bit and I had memorized uh, a lot of it but not all of it and I remember my script wasn't in the Zoom like you couldn't see it but it was on my computer and Rob could tell <laughs> and, and he, he said okay he was like okay let's not use the scripts uh, put them away and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh no this isn't starting off well because <laughs> i knew a lot of it but i just didn't know all of it like completely yet <laughs> and, and it was early on this was very early on like i always know everything before i start but <laughs> but rob caught me like a little early and i was like oh no 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 <laughs> what have i done what have i continued to do <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> i mean this is such a massive role for an actor because I mean, Boo Boo literally is on screen, you know, almost the entire time. And when he's not, he's, you know, probably like tied up to a bed waiting for the camera to come back. <laughs> Screaming in another part of the house. <laughs> exactly. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, it's a lot on an actor's shoulders and, um, and you think about, okay, it's memorizing the lines, right? It's an entire script. And, but it's also remembering all of the cues, tiny little cues of, okay, I need you to put your hand you know, here, but not your right hand because you're gonna block the camera. It has to be just your left hand. And, and just so many precise moments of blocking. Like closing that, a door, not, you have to close the door in between the lines. You have to roll up the, roll down the window before you shut the door because the camera has to go through that window. Yeah. And then before you go, you actually have to roll the window back up because now we're driving and you can't have the wind of the car. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, the things that you have to usually, that you try to as a director shield the actors from, right? Of, uh, well, let's roll up the window so that the audio is better, or you know, just the technical. We really had to be as as immersive and collaborative, and still, you know, keep everybody in the moment. Um, and just a huge testament to, you know, Boo Boo's uh, willingness to jump in and and take on that challenge, and not just not just do a great job, but just like a phenomenal job. I mean, really carried you, you know the the film and um, and. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just a huge testament to his his ability and and hard work as an actor. Honestly, I was just so excited to make it, and so like I think that energy was just that was all I could lead with. <laughs> you know, like at, there's comes a point when you either lead with like being like really, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Or you lead with the excitement of like the fact that we're making a movie that we all really love, and I think that was the general like feeling on set was that people were leading with that foot rather than leading with the 
the foot of like, gosh, we have so much that we're about to take on. Like that was in the back of everyone's heads, obviously, but no one was really, no one showed up to set with that uh, part going forward. Every, I, I, every time I was around, I, uh, I always felt that everyone was very excited to like try it. Like, okay, let's try it, you know? Um, and I think that was the overall like push. We, we definitely we definitely brought together a group of people that were fired up by are we going to be able to pull this off <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i think you did and and so i, I want to thank you again for that that passion for that work and for being here uh and and sitting down with me so really appreciate it guys i think i'm out of, it's all the time i have allotted with you um really really glad you could you could join me today so. Yeah, well, thanks for the questions. It's great meeting you, Derek, and um, thanks for, for being a champion of the film. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any Fanboy Planet videos. And remember, use your powers for good.